Handel's beloved Messiah has delighted audiences around the world for centuries with its glorious music and message of hope, comfort, and peace. This is Jeffrey Bores, conductor of the Symphony Tacoma Voices, inviting you to an online production of Messiah on Friday, December 18th at 7.30 p.m. This virtual performance will feature many of Messiah's moving choruses and dramatic solos. Our Symphony Tacoma Voices and orchestra members will be joined by Pacific Lutheran University faculty soloists for this special presentation. It is our hope to connect the drama, majesty, and meaning of Handel's masterpiece to the challenges and surprises of today's world. Join us for A Messiah for Our Time, Friday, December 18th at 7.30 p.m. Welcome to Symphony Tacoma's and Messiah for Our Time. And I'm thrilled to have with us our wonderful chorus director for Symphony Tacoma Voices, Dr. Jeffrey Bors. Welcome. Thank you, Sarah. It's great to be with you tonight. Thank you. Now, uh, we have, I hope, friends with us both watching on Facebook Live and perhaps on YouTube. So I want to encourage everybody to please let us know you're here um, in the comments, post a chat. I see that we have Dick Ammerman and Verity from Gig Harbor, Amanda, Clark, Liz. So friends, thank you so much for joining us. Now, normally we would be performing this evening in the Pantages Theater with Symphony Tacoma and quite possibly Symphony Tacoma Voices and often Symphony Tacoma Youth Chorus. It's very hard at this time because we really, really miss being with everybody together. And, you know, Christmas is a time, a holiday is a time of singing. For me, even song was one of my most precious memories. And over my career, the many holiday programs have dominated my life for months and months because the programming is so complicated and interesting and we always utilize voices and choirs and so it's it's a very busy time for singing so i cannot imagine how it is to be one of those choir members right now i can see how it is for me but how are you doing jeffrey with with the choir and all of this that we are missing at this time well, you know, for all of us, it's been a challenge. You know, everyone is challenged at this time. But interestingly, singers and choirs, just right from the get-go, when this whole pandemic started, were kind of in the in the news as being a uh, a super spreader type of an event. And so, uh, choirs have been at the top of all the research, and singing has been at the top of all the research about what's you know what really spreads. Uh, the COVID virus the most because we're singing with great energy and lots of air and whatnot. And what's tragic about it is that so much of our well-being is tied up in our voice and then we're silenced. So that I think really has motivated us in the choir and, and choirs around the, the country and, uh, and singers all over the place that have just tried everything we can to keep singing. And so when the when the concert year started, we started right up on Monday nights and started having rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And again, the the sad thing, and I can't think about it too much, is that each one of these singers is singing all by themselves. But we would have right. vocalizing, and we would we'd talk about artistry, and then I would play music for them, and they would sing with that, so they could at least hear something. And uh, and uh, it's really been kind of a heroic effort, I would say. Choir is also such a social thing. I have such a love of choir from um, singing, actually, even in church choirs from being, you know, 9, 10, 11. And, and my best friends were, you know, the singers in the choir. So I think there's we're all missing a lot of friendship. It's, a, it's wonderful that you've been able to continue through this entire fall singing 
with the choir, even even virtually, and keeping everybody safe. So, Susan, but this Susan. year, instead of bringing loss, now what you've done over this last few months is is bringing us to new through new technology. You've stretched the envelope of possibilities in our performance with what we are launching, uh, which we're going to give you a sneak peek of everybody of tonight. But tell us. Um, a little bit about this most unusual messiah that we are going to be talking about this evening. What's most unique? Well, it's it's ironic in a way because we've when when uh, you know we've done this now for eighteen years in a row. I think this would have been eight, year eighteen, mm -hmm. and it can get very tiresome for the players and for the singers to be doing oh, we have to do this again, or we have to rehearse it. And we always have new members every year, so we do have to rehearse this piece. And so I've always kind of set it as a goal of mine to do it in a, a slightly different way every year. I remember one year we did, um, we we semi-staged it. And uh, one year we sang it with a, a ornamentation all over the place and quite stylistic. And then, and so it's kind of ironic that now we're forced to do it yet again in a very, very different way. And, and it's a way that we could never have done it before because the technology just so happened to be in place at the right time for us mm -hmm. to be able to go remote. So we ha had an experience last summer, which I'll tell you more about it a little bit later um, in the second segment, but um, we had a, a wonderful experience making a virtual choir recording over the summer, and it kind of gave us confidence to try to do more of it. And when I started looking into Messiah and doing and what would be possible with it, we thought, well, we'll just put all the technology together and and try to create something that tells a story, um, a story for this time that we're in. Right, and it is quite a story because this year we're making history. I mean, I don't know if in the 250 years, I mean, how many times was there a, a pandemic happening? Probably more than this time, and we all know about Spanish mm -hmm. flu, etc. But, you know, for 250 years, the drama and message has been every year passed out um, to people all over the world, and there's something about this piece that transcends boundaries of culture and language and time. And as time stands still right now, we are preserving and recreating a, a new Messiah. Um, and since its first performance, it's always been connected with issues of social justice and supporting the poor. Um, last year, even we we did connect with emergency food network around our performance. But this this program again is about bringing our community together. I noticed there was something about fellowship there from one of our um, watchers this evening. Absolutely, fellowship and bringing our community together. So, how have you done that with with this Messiah for our time so uniquely this time? Yeah. I mean, how many times have we all heard, boy, I can't wait till 2020 is over with. <laughs> and because there's so much that we're dealing with in our lives these days, and we will never forget it. And we'll, we'll be always be changed. In fact, Barry J Johnson uh, sings those texts, you know, that, that those words about, you know, we will all be changed in a moment. Well, we're all being changed this year. And you're right, uh, Handel in his heart, uh, from the very beginning, uh, decided that he was going to connect this with the poor and connect this with the needy and with children and with poverty and always was able to share uh, his wealth um, to the, until the end of his life um, with with those needy people, people of um, that were downtrodden. And so I thought it was really kind of a, an inspirational thing to me to speak to uh, in, in the very same way that Handel translated this biblical story to a well-to-do London crowd, where he kind of made it like a story that wasn't too too personal or too religious, but more about what happens in life and the hope that that, that story can, can tell everybody of all faiths and 
whatnot. And he he really translated it well for for that time. So I I feel felt really mo motivated to translate it yet again for this time and to tr draw uh, our attention to the, the challenges that we face, whether it's wildfires or the Black Lives Matter or or climate change or 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 the economy, um, you name it. Um, and these the 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 lessons of light and hope and and uh, love and peace um, just are resounding to us right now. Right. Very powerful. Right, and it's been quite a journey. I, I remember talking with you over the summer. What are we going to do with the Messiah? Because we knew at that time that we weren't going to be able to, and so um, immediately we were trying to figure out ways of presenting ourselves differently and you went about um, it with the online choir right away and came up with an absolutely brilliant um, composition that commission I, I would say with Evan Lambert who's in the choir yeah. writing a piece that was just so relevant so it, it's really about making classical music here and in the now and relevant to people so can you share a little bit about the Lord is my light, because it, it's already got some 2,000 views. And, and I think Evan is a rock star, and <laughs> I just love his arrangements. And So tell us a little bit about how that came about and how that has helped prepare the choir and Messiah for our time. Yeah, I, I want to say it's three years ago now that we did quite a number of things over the course of our of our uh, concert season um, that was uplifting uh, black artists in our community. And so uh, Evan wanted to to make a contribution to to that and uh, and he had always dreamed about doing a uh, a CD that was gospel oriented and whatnot. And so this gave him a reason to really push forward and he created three new pieces for us. Um, to for our winter concert, and we br brought uh, Stephanie Johnson in to um, PLU grad, by the way, and who um, sang the solos with us, and and we ended up taking those pieces on tour when we went to Europe the following summer, <laughs> and it, it was just it was terrific. He came up with this piece called "The Lord Is My Light," which, and this was genius, I think. He he wrote pretty simple parts for the symphony chorus. And we could sing these four part choruses and kind of uh, call and response things. And then he wrote all this complex music for eight part choir. And so, and over the course of a number of months last year, he and Amy Bors um, recorded voiceovers for all those eight part sections. And uh, and then we added our, our four part section into that over the course of the summer. Um, which was a challenge for us. It was our first virtual choir uh, experience. And uh, and then we brought in a soloist, another soloist uh, to sing with us who was just gorgeous. And she had was a, a singer who used to sing with us years ago and now is just doing solo and church work. Um, so it was, it was a fabulous experience. And again, that was our first venture into how do we take a piece of gospel music there mm -hmm. and really tie it into the Black Lives Matter movement that really came to the fore last summer. And that's we... right. It's it's been I want to show everybody just a little bit of it in, in a moment, but I do also want to remind everybody about last Christmas program where Evan also um orchestrated music for uh the refugee chorus to sing with right. Symphony Tacoma. And that was also just a, a really brilliant uh, collaboration um, of community and relevancy in, in these modern times. And um, should we just rem remind everybody, and you can go and watch the full thing later on YouTube, but how about we just hear a little bit about that and then bring some of our guests on who are waiting in the wings to, to join us. Yeah, okay. so I think the clip is a, is the ending portion where you'll hear um, the soloist doing some improvisation, and we're just doing kind of the repetitive shout chorus at the end of the piece, and uh, and so you get just a little little uh, 
teasing taste of it, but I do strongly urge you because it's very powerful, the slides and the visuals that go along with this music. And Evan and Amy's singing is brilliant in this in this recording. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And Sybil, welcome. You, you, I saw you singing there. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Sybil, you've been an anchor for the choir for many years. I know you've had many different roles in the choir um, and sung solos in world premieres. Uh, the choir has just had such a diverse output, certainly with the time that I've been here, and you have many more memories, but I'm, I'm thinking of everything from Tandon's Water Passion to Sibelius Finlandia to Borden Palotsvian Dances to Debussy Nocturnes, and then, of course, all the wonderful Christmas programming, Messiah, and your own beautiful uh, standalone choir concerts. So tell us, what's your favorite memory? Do you, do you have one? Because I'm, I'm finding this is an incredible time of reflection for us, as well as creativity and using technology. But the chance to reflect has been really amazing. And I reflect so often on the incredible musicianship and creativity of the members of our organization. What was your, um, what, tell us about, the memories for you and, and how long you've been in the choir. Sure. Um, let's see, my um, tenure in the choir, I believe this is my 16th year. Um, so it's been a while. Um, I, man, trying to think of the favorite memories though, I would, I'll narrow it down to the top three, I think. Um, and you, um, you gave a couple of them. The Water Passion, I think, was yeah. definitely high up there on my list. What an amazing piece to be a part of. Um, that was pretty phenomenal. I I have to say, too, I think just the, the whole process of singing the Messiah, um, finding our, our venue, our home kind of venue um, there in uh, Charles Borromeo. I think the first concert we had there and all the many additional concerts um, there in Gig Harbor, um, it's, it really provided us the space for us to provide the work to the community. Um, so I have so many great memories of, of the Messiah there as well. Um, and then I think probably a more recent memory of one of my favorites would be the, um, the West Side Story and the opportunity for the, the chorus also to participate in that. Um, we had a great, um, you know, exciting time for all of us to be able to be in the wings and, and participate in that, in that beautiful scene that you helped guide and <laughs> help us with. And people can see that online now. We have some great pictures and you, you had a fabulous dress on. And yeah, mm -hmm. go to YouTube and find West Side Story. And, and later on this season, we're going to put out um, a bit of a documentary performance, docu-performance, docu-formance, whatever we're going to call it, um, of Water Passion as well. So people will be able to relive oh, that good. memory. 
But, you know, the choir also carries the torch for Symphony to come across the world with touring. You've done some spectacular tours. And, um, Jeffrey, maybe you could share some memories um, of the choir. They recently went to Estonia and, and just sort of take us through some of the highlights of being in Symphony Tacoma Voices. Yeah. Uh, when was that, Sybil? We, it was just a summer ago. It seems like so long ago now when we were there. 2019. Uh, yeah. Um, Susan, if you bring up a picture there, it's a picture of the, the final concert. And uh, wow. what, you're, what you're looking at is an aerial shot. And, and to the right of the screen is a, um, a stage. And it's actually like a, almost like a, a stadium seating. And there are 30,000 people that are up in that shell, 30,000 singers, uh, all the choir. And then you'll see that little break there. And then the rest of the people that are out there is about 150,000 people in the, on the grounds watching this choral concert. And that represents over 10% of the entire country of Estonia. And talk about no social distancing. We were, we were just... Like standing like this, weren't we, Sybil? What, what's your memory of that? Uh, yeah, gosh, I uh, was ooh, real high up to the top of the little curvature. I was um, in the middle of three rows of people stacked on to one step that was probably, what, uh, five feet of a concrete step. So three rows to, uh, to each step. It was packed in. Have you ever felt... Uh, S such a rock star as a choral singer before in Never. your life? Very good point. Never have I ever. <laughs> the whole country shuts down for a couple of days and uh, we were able to um, gather, all 30,000 of us gather in downtown Tallinn, uh, which is the capital of Estonia and beautiful town. And then we wend our way. We, t we actually have a choir parade. And each choir is, is, has their sign and whatnot. Um, oh, there's, oh, have you ever seen something like this? It's a two-story high podium, Sarah. Mm. Have you ever conducted wow. up in the air like that? <laughs> yeah, there's a, our dear friend Hirvo Surva is conducting the choir right there. But he, they have to be up that high in order for people to see them. Uh, my mind there. is boggling with the logistics of that many people singing together at once. How many choir directors that must have been doing an incredible job? How, how did that work? Well, they have rehearsals, of course, uh, that take place over the course of an entire year. And so they have these, these um, head conductors that travel all over the country and, and do regional rehearsals over the course of the year. And everybody learns the music. And we had to, too. In fact, we had to um, we were accepted to be in the festival, but we had to actually show that we were worthy to be in the festival by by having all the music prepared and, and a good handle on the language, et cetera, by, by March, I think it was. So it was really quite strict. But once we, the day of, um, all the all television focuses on this and they have a big parade and the choirs get to, get to, to march. And this is one of my dearest memories of this entire tour was Dick Ammerman deciding to march with the choir. And he was having the time of his life, weren't you, Dick? You were you were high-fiving the entire, you know, it seemed like the whole nation that was along the side. And he would just give everyone high fives and hugs and giving flowers and getting flowers. And it was just an, an amazing, amazing time to see everybody so joyful. That's wonderful that board members and friends have, have gone along and joined the choir on these tours. Um, it's, it's really, really special. Just like Symphony, like the Tacoma Youth Chorus also goes on tour every couple of years. I, I think, I don't know if people know about this, but the torch of music of Symphony Tacoma and, and Tacoma Youth Chorus and, is carried across, across the country with these tours, which is, other than being a remarkable and important experience, the insight to, to go and experience culture and sing to another culture is mm. so important. The, tell us also about the significance, because that is so critical. Why the, do the Estonians have this festival and how the history is extremely important for them? 
to have this well, singing festival. Yeah. I've always called Estonia the the franum of the world, meaning the you know the this this part of our body which is such a strange thing, this little divot. It's like we're the last thing that was God's last stitch to put our, our halves together was this funny little spot right here. And and Estonia is that. It's been overrun for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years by other countries, whether it's Sweden or Norway or Finland or Germany or Russia or you name it. And it's just constant back and forth. And they the only thing that encoded their culture and defined who they were were the songs that they made. And so starting in the 1800s, they decided, well, let's celebrate and let's let's celebrate our songs. But interestingly, at that point, um, Germany was in charge. And so all their songs had to sound German. Uh, in fact, they sang in German. And and so they then they worked toward independence and they became a country in 1917, I want to say. And then what happens is is they were a country for a very short period of time. And then Russia took over. In the Soviet Union, and then they weren't allowed to sing their songs. And so then they worked and worked and said, okay, we'll only sing our folk songs. We won't sing any patriotic songs. All of a sudden, all of the folk songs became secret patriotic songs. And so now you can see on their faces this feeling of patriotism, this feeling of unity, this feeling of history, this feeling of family, this feeling of art that is like nothing we've ever seen before. And Sybil, don't you, it's almost indescribable how swept away we were, wouldn't you say? It is truly one of the um, experiences of my life that I will be ever so grateful I was able to go and sing in, um, to participate, uh, but also to to just learn and to be there with them as they sang their songs. Um, and what an honor and a privilege it was for me, an American, to just go there and sing their songs as well. Thank you so much for sharing about that. Um, it's really a moment of pride for me when I, every time I look and think about this trip, and, and I wish I was there, but um, how extraordinary. And, and let's hope that we can get back to singing again soon. Uh, yeah. We know how, how hard it has been uh, for singers to get together. Sybil, tell us about your um, online rehearsing and, and, and what's been valuable for you. And maybe, of course, it's a hard thing to try to sing online. <laughs> and you've got an incredible program to share with us soon. But can you sh share something about the online experience of rehearsing? Sure. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult. Um, I, I assume that most people know of that um, uh, because, you know, a choir's work is togetherness. <laughs> so being alone um, and rehearsing alone mm -hmm. while watching your fellow um, musicians um, it's, it's interesting, you know, I think everybody goes through waves of acceptance. Some nights you feel okay, some nights you feel um, not okay. And, you know, kind of riding the wave of your emotions um, because you're not with the people that you normally should be with, that we have been with for me for, you know, over a decade and so many people that work continuously, years and years um, of work you know, building something together. Um, that's, that's very tough. Um, so I think the, there's, there's times to think about it as a, you know, a, a long haul drive, like anything else. Um, and we're just right in the middle of it. So being patient with yourself, being graceful with yourself, um, giving kudos to people when you hear them, and see them and have private conversations during the chat. Um, so making connections during the rehearsal um, as much as possible is also important. As you can see from the, the picture there, we all have a different setup kind of at home um, and we can see each other's faces. So that's quite important. Thank you I for like sharing that. Yes, it I is a great one. You, you guys have just been doing an awesome job. And I just want to take this moment to say, 
I'm thanking everybody who's commenting and chatting here in the in the chat because um, we're seeing those comments and uh, we really feel you there right there with us um, and connecting with each other. And this is just extraordinary. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about Messiah for our time. And Jeffrey, if you wouldn't mind, please give us an overview of the virtual Messiah. Somebody, um, I think David posted, uh, are we doing just the Christmas portion? And could you give us a little bit of insight? And then I think we have another little music um, to share with people. Sure. We're, Thanks. Uh, so what we've done is, is um, Handle, again, kind of harkening back to what Handel did. You know, he's, he was... He was wanting to speak to, to people of the that were downtrodden, and every time he performed it, he performed it differently. He used different kinds of solos. He did it in different order. He would do certain movements and and not do others, and uh, and so that we're doing the very same thing. And uh, in fact, we've got a couple of surprises. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll share you one one surprise. Um, the biggest question that I ever get after a Messiah performance is, why isn't it over at, with the Hallelujah Chorus? Because it's the most famous thing and it's the most beloved piece in the entire three hours. Yeah. And of course, I know people are tired and want to go home by that point when the Hallelujah Chorus hits, but that's that's their favorite part. So they want to have that be at the end. Well, for this performance, the Hallelujah Chorus is going to be at the end. And so what we're doing is we're going to use three parts. And the first part will deal mostly with um, prophecy, and it will it will give a hint about the the birth of Christ, uh, but just a hint. Of course, Handel himself almost spends no time on that part of the story. And then we'll go into the second part, uh, and um, and which deals more with the um, passion and the suffering of uh, of Jesus and that drama, drama and we'll spend some time there and we will end that section with the chorus that normally ends the the entire messiah with the worthy is christ who uh, was slain the, the lamb who was slain and so for the choruses we're going to be just putting slides slideshows along with this track of music that was recorded by the Symphony Tacoma and Symphony Tacoma Voices in 2011. And, and so we're kind of creating a story. And for numerous of the mo movements, our, our choir has practiced and recorded, like you saw on the slides, um, recorded their voices. So their voices are added to the choir from 2011. So what you'll be hearing are new voices with the old music, and then pictures that will draw the words into modern uh, our modern story, and we're going to tell the story of 2020 uh, and how Excellent. this text, how, how yes. the text speaks to it. That's right. This is a remembrance and recreation at the same same time, um, and since it's sort of symbiotic because we are sharing images that you guys have sent in the things that touch and, and meaningful for you, how the Messiah speaks to you at this time. Let's do a little flashback. And I want to thank Sybil for, for joining us. We're going to meet a couple of the soloists in a minute. So after this little flashback to, I think a 2011 performance, maybe we'll see you at the end, Sybil. Thank you. Thank you, Sybil. Thank you. This is Comfort Ye from 2011.
was you, James Brown, singing Blast from the Past. <laughs> How about Welcome. that? Welcome, Sun Cho and James Brown. Thank you for being part of our virtual uh, Messiah for our time. We Thank really are so happy to have you. Yeah. Thanks for having but us. But you didn't expect to hear that. <laughs> no, I don't know where you, you, you must have had to dust that off on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> Well, you were you were, you stood out then as this genius of ornamentation, and I remember talking to people after that was over, and said, I have never heard it sung like that before with such grace and elegance, and it to this oh. day just rings in my ears. I've never forgotten it. Too kind. Well, you know, you get possessed by the spirit, and you start riffing, and then it's it's <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> You are both um, faculty at the Pacific Lutheran University, and PLU has just a remarkable voice faculty. And all of the soloists um, have come at, in past times, I mean, not always, but often from Pacific Lutheran University. And so uh, soon, you, you just joined last year. How, how are you enduring it? We're, we're so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Actually, it's uh, my fourth year. It seems like just last year, but time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> she just got tenure, actually. Well, congratulations. Ooh. That's great. Thank you. In the performance that we have for Messiah, um, you, you recorded from home, correct? And I think James recorded at PLU. So PLU. how did it work when uh, soon you recorded with the accompaniment, how what which came yeah. first, and how did you work that out? Sure. Um, first of all, I want to thank Maestro Boys for giving me the option to record at home, where I felt safe to do what I love, which is to sing and perform. And during this time, it's quite challenging due to health concerns. So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, as a professional classical soloist, um, I would cringe if I showed up to a gig and there was a video camera and a big jumbotron screen on stage. <laughs> to pro project my, you know, face in real time. It's it's quite scary because that's not our training mm -hmm. to act for the, the, the camera. So for me to see my face on the computer screen the whole time I was recording the aria, he was despised it, was interesting and horrifying at the same time. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, as a teacher, I see everything and I saw my jaw open a certain way. I was like, oh, I should not do that. I need to redo that. And um, also singing with the recorded piano track at home was a big learning experience. I re first I recorded the recorded myself singing the aria with me playing the piano part like I was playing chopsticks very poorly, but I sent the recording to the fabulous Amy Boris so she could get an idea about my tempo and where I breathe and where I took some time for musical expressions and other things. And then she sent me a recording. And I had to listen and practice with it multiple times to internalize the flow of the aria because I had forgotten what I did when I recorded myself singing it. Then I recorded it, but I had to do it multiple times because I couldn't get the balance of the recorded track and the speaker mm -hmm. and my voice. And so I had to quickly learn how to be my own sound engineer. Mm -hmm. And um I have a new, I have found new respect for recording artists because it was really hard to be in sync with the pre-recorded track and also to stay present and in the moment to make my expression seem natural without right. waiting for when do I come in, when do I cut off. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was quite challenging, but it was also really good discipline, I have to say. Almost like real live opera. It's you have to stay right on your toes and constantly be adjusting to everything around you. But James, you're you're a multi-talented because you're a conductor, stage director, singer. Uh, I like being busy. Did this come easily to you? <laughs> well, I don't know about easily. I mean, it was much easier because I I got the chance to do it live uh, mm -hmm. with Amy at the organ, and uh, Jeffrey was there helping us. Uh, put it all together and, and giving great uh, coaching comments. Um, uh, we, we had a great conversation about this one articulation in one area uh, that I that I really, really respected and, and responded to. So thank you, Jeffrey, for that. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's poignant, um, you know, to look out and see a, an empty concert hall. But uh, at the same time, you know, just being immersed in this beautiful music, uh, it's, it's be, and, and actually being able to make music with another human being in the room uh, was actually a great experience. And I think, you know, Holly and, and the soprano and Barry, our wonderful baritone, uh, the same way, I think, you know. I think we've got a picture of, the, of that. Uh, Susan, if you could pull that up, it'd be interesting for the audience to see. Um, how that was. There's Holly uh, recording. And I think Amy's over there in the corner, probably playing the organ. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so tell uh, tell the audience about that, James. And, and Soon Cho, too, just from recording at home, um, there's nobody there. And it, it, where do you go as an artist and what do you draw, f draw from? And, and in particular, maybe did, did some of the text that you sang this time maybe ring a little bit differently because of what we're going through? Yeah, I think for, for me, especially, you know, the, the opening words comfort you, I, you know, that, that first restative is, uh, if, if if there was a wasn't another time in history where we we needed comforting, I don't I don't know what it would be. So, um, you know, you feel kind of responsible for those words. You know, as the tenor to be the first soloist uh, to to utter a sound in the in this giant oratorio. Uh, it's it's a lot of pressure, but but you know, at the same time, I think if you immerse yourself in it, you can yourself be comforted. Right. Do you so, hear the way that you've done a little, since we're talking about Comfort Ye in this rather extraordinary way that we're going to present it, just give a little context. Let's, let's play a snippet of Comfort Ye and then we'll all come back. And, and so people can sort of envisage what we're thinking about um, how it might console and comfort with, with the tragedy um, that's happened in our world this last year. Sun Cho, last year when you sang the He Was Despised, it, I just was so, and I'd sneak a peek over my shoulder every now and again to make sure I was with you. And and your the drama of your face and the drama of the, your heart and the emotions that you convey are so vivid and so varied. I I, I don't know of another singer or artist that, that has such a, a wide variety of expression. And I thought, how is it? Oh, there you are. <laughs> that's a so, great face. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, that's one of like a thousand faces that you showed mm -hmm. as as I scrolled through to get a screenshot of you, and I just would hit pause all the way through. He was despised, and the the varied emotions that you were able to convey, and and how you did that, 
like you say, staring into a, uh, a computer monitor beyond me. So how, how do you, how do you get so deeply into all these varied emotions? Thank you so much. Um, I try to internalize what the, the character of the piece is going through and try to relive it and try to, um, you know, tell a story about that character, especially in this piece, he was despised. I'm telling a story about the great prophet, Jesus Christ. And he was rejected by the very people that he tried to save. He was shamed, spit it on, crucified to death. And to put myself in that position, it's horrifying. And so, you know, whatever facial expression came out, came out because I felt the, the experience. Um, and yeah. you were also thinking about uh, more recent uh, people who were also despised and rejected, weren't you? Absolutely. I believe through centuries, there have been individuals who have walked the narrow path to seek and protect human rights and to protect people's freedoms and liberties, and such as Nelson Mandela, MLK Jr., Martin Luther, um, yes, Martin, there he is, Gandhi, which is a very short list of significant figures that were despised and rejected by people. Um, and they were just fighting to make this world better for all people. And I believe the story is relevant in our own communities and in our countries and globally at large. Yeah, very relevant story to Beautiful. this day, I believe. And Jim, we're kind of thinking about this being a a translation for a, a modern audience, a translation of a very old story, just like Handel translated it for, for his London audience. And you're a, you're a outstanding conductor in your own right and, um, and have done many, many operas and whatnot. And can you share maybe some kind of translations that you've done and why you feel that's necessary too? Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, I've, the uh, the companies with whom I've worked <clears throat> often have orchestra pits that are much smaller than maybe the composer intended. So uh, <laughs> one has to do some translating of the the, the orchestration, and so uh, that's that's one big in addition to the, of course the language translation that that takes place as a stage director, uh, and and actually one could say translating. Uh, the plot of these of these pieces that are you know in, maybe in their historic context had greater relevance for the audience. Uh, one has to translate it for our audiences today, but but yeah, translating the orchestration uh, has been a huge challenge. But it it makes uh, it makes for a really bespoke experience uh, for me uh, as the director and conductor, but also uh, for the singers and. Uh, it's it, and actually, I've come in. <laughs> I've really come into deep communion with these composers in the process of culling through these these orchestral scores. Sometimes Puccini, you find these non chordal tones that you know, we think, well, you don't really need that, and then you then you play it back on the MIDI, and you go, you go well, that, that you absolutely need that, you know, uh, little things like that, you know. Uh, that you you really discover things about about the music you know um, that, that you wouldn't have otherwise. Interesting. Indeed, and I I think the other remarkable thing about what what we're doing here is um, not only uh, relating this to our world now um, and drawing upon a lot of history, but the process of editing what is hundreds of photos that have been sent in for this Masaya for our time mm. is an immense project and an immense ta a task. I have to shout out to Timothy Little and Jeffrey, who Jeffrey for the concept and Timothy also for the incredible editing work. I mean, having done a bit of editing now with our encore performances, <laughs> I know how long it takes and how incredibly consuming it can be, and how very rewarding the artistic process is also. So I want to thank very much Timothy for his time and efforts, along with Jeffrey, for putting this together. I thought it might be interesting also just to 
since this is a kind of behind the scenes, just tell everybody what each movement is going to be and, and remind people you're not only seeing virtual choir, live recording, home recording, but also um, our symphony musicians who have also recorded the overture and the PIFA from home. So you're going to be seeing the overture, um, which is a timeline, of course, of the Old Testament, but with modern day performances, uh, pictures, images, and a very, very different kind of Messiah with the imagery, of course. And Comfort Ye is, of course, about uh, every valley. Photos of modern day America and social justice themes and how every valley is, is, is very different nowadays and how we have to recognize is the differences when we share land, when we share our world. The PIFA, of course, is, a, is that beautiful shepherd's flock um lovely string string section part of it and, and even, we show even that ahead. even that speaks up to uh, to the upside downness of the story i mean there were only i mean the shepherds were the most outcast of the whole culture and they were all and in italy even in the renaissance they they were the most outcast people and but they were allowed one day to come in town and play their pipes Mm -hmm. And hence why he called it PIFA, because it was mm -hmm. acknowledging that tradition yeah. of, of playing their pipe. And the shepherds got to be a part of the community one day a year, uh, right near Christmas. And so he, he's really uplifting this outcast part of the community uh, through that. And of course, we'll close that this, the first section with the For Unto Us a Child is Born Again, which is really the only little nod to, to Christmas there, but what a what mm -hmm. uh, no Messiah would be complete without that amazing, amazing chorus. Absolutely, and and on it goes. I'm not going to give it all away because we want it to be a wonderful surprise for you all. Um, right. But with the help of so many people, this is a is it a massive endeavor. It's a huge undertaking with so many people uh, working. I want to thank you all very, very much, and also Symphony Tacoma. Voices who've been rehearsing tirelessly. Sybil, are you still with us? Yes, to bring through um, extraordinary uh, performance of of this. I want to thank everybody for being our guests. And um, time has just flown this evening. <laughs> I could talk to you guys about this all night, really. And I'm sure many of us would like to do so. And and some of us will have to wait for that um, long chat i love the get togethers after messiah by the way that's one of the best <laughs> the best times of the year but thank you all so very much for joining us jeffrey yes, thank you so much for your artistry creativity musicianship and soulfulness um please share this tonight with with your friends your guests and and we're looking forward to two weeks from tonight actually it's a friday don't forget right. it's a friday almost two weeks um, from now, you will see a Messiah for our time. And we are still working on it right this moment. Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything, Jeffrey? Is there any last words? Anybody? Well, a special, a special another thanks to Timothy Little. He's a genius and the, the fastest worker in this edit editing that I've ever seen. And if I have an idea of what I would like something to look like, he can make it happen just like this. It's incredible. So what a joy to work with him um, to bring things to life and just looking forward to this project kind of unfolding. In fact, I think we've got another little minute of a Hallelujah Chorus maybe. Yes, should we, should we hear that? And, and yeah, then we go right not? into, is, the, is that, I forget if that's the final little excerpt, but, but let's hear it. And um, we wish everybody um, a very healthy week, stay safe take all the guidelines very, very seriously. Please, please, we don't want anybody getting sick. And uh, we will we'll bide our time and we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you all. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.